I'm joined by an amazing lady. She goes by the name Kathy Kirago. She is a highly skilled and passionate film composer and sound engineering with a strong commitment to social justice and pan African pan-Africanism and she's a mental health advocate. Uh, you love this conversation. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you very much. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Uh -huh. I'm glad to be here. All right. So uh, I know you are so many things, but let mm -hmm. me allow you to introduce yourself the, the, the best way that you'd want people to know you. So who's Kathy? Okay. So my name is Kathy Kiragu. I am a music producer a sound engineer, a film composer, and I also do sound design. Mm -hmm. um, I love orchestration, I love instruments, the orchestra, and I love, and I'm passionate about mental health awareness. And so that is something that's a big part of who I am. Right. Yes. And uh, I forgot to mention that you are a graduate from Berkeley College of Music. Yes, I am. So you're really an expert in this. You invested in music completely. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. Wonderful. Because, you know, some people think that music is just something that's, you know, you just learn along the way. It's just, yes. you know. But how important is music for, for you and why should music be taken seriously? Well, music is important for me because it it's, it's helps you communicate what you feel. And sometimes when you listen to certain songs, you can hear what you, what you feel. So it's like an avenue of expression. Mm -hmm. And so I believe music should be taken seriously because it can be used as a, uh, like some, something that can change mm -hmm. lives through music, like social justice and creating mental health awareness mm -hmm. and different uh, speaking up against femicide, yeah. different issues. So I think music is a powerful tool. Yeah. as an avenue of change. Mm -hmm. I think yes. I, I understood the power of music during um, the recent Manda Mano in, in yes. June. And, you know, that really got people to, 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 to say that they want change. And yes. they, they went for the change that they really want to see. That's and that's true. the power of music, right? Uh -huh. Not just that, but I also know that music heals. Uh -huh. For people yes. who are going through something, uh -huh. you know, you just listen to some music. I think personally, uh, I really love music. It speaks to me in different, in different seasons mm -hmm. of life. There's a certain music that will just speak to you. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Wonderful. So yeah. what, is your, what is your story? I know that um, you have, uh, why, are you, rather, why, why are you passionate about mental health? Okay, I'm passionate about mental health because I was diagnosed with three conditions. Mm -hmm. Well, the first two when I was uh, about 14, 15, uh, which is bipolar and schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and ADHD when I was much older, about, in about 2019. Mm -hmm. And so, but the symptoms of ADHD, I had them from when I was younger. Okay. It was just, it was just diagnosed later. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a struggle and I've been able to me, through music, I've been able to overcome different challenges, music and faith. I've been able to overcome the challenges of my mental health. Mm -hmm. And so why I'm, a, why I'm passionate about mental health is because it's, it's something I've gone through. It's something I've experienced the, the good, bad, ugly seasons of, mm. of mental health and uh, yes, especially the stigma and seeing how mm. stigma affects not just me, but the people around me, family, community, society. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that's where your, your passion comes, yes. comes from. Yes. And we want to understand um, your journey, but we also want to understand for, for those people that are hearing of ADHD, schizophrenia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, bipolar. bipolar yes. uh, I know people m might be familiar with bipolar, but mm -hmm. I know the other two might not be as familiar for others. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can tell us, what, how is bipolar like? How is ADHD like? And how is schizophrenia? Okay. So first, it's, it's, it's all these conditions come out in different people in different ways, but there are certain symptoms that are 
similar for many people. So for astrophysics, schizophrenia, schizophrenia has a lot of like delusions where you think things that are not actually true. Like mm -hmm. you're very sure of something that, let's say you're paranoid, you think someone is following you or someone wants to harm you. Mm. And then there's also hallucinations, seeing things or hearing things that are not there. Mm. And then I think those are the main things that stand out for schizophrenia, but they are, it's like, there's a whole lot of symptoms. Mm. And then ADHD, it's, it depends, there are three types. There's the inner, inattentive, where it's like st people struggle to pay attention. Yeah. Then there's the hyperactive, where people are very hyperactive. And then there's the combined, which is a combination of the two, of the two okay. inattentive and hyperactive. So someone could be inattentive and mm. with the ADHD, another person could just be hyperactive, hyperactive and yes. another person could have both, both of them. Both, yes. And mm. then bipolar has uh, extreme highs and extreme lows. So there, there, there's bipolar one and bipolar two. I think bi bipolar one has more highs. It's mm -hmm. like it's called mania, where you have like you can stay without sleeping for a couple of days or oh. even more, and you just like uh, indulge in different like you just it's really it's like a high, mm -hmm. and then bipolar. So you have more of that in bipolar one, mm -hmm. but then sometimes you have extreme lows, depression. Okay. Uh, but in bipolar two. In bipolar one. In okay. bipolar two, you have more depression, which is the one I have. Mm -hmm. So you have more lows mm -hmm. than highs. So occasionally I will have some highs, I will have some highs and so I, I go without sleeping, especially when I'm working on music and ah. yeah, like you just go and <laughs> you're not sleeping. Okay. And so that's bipolar two. Mm -hmm. And so that's the one I have. I think that's, but then with, with I think, that's just an overview. Like yeah. there's a lot there's more, more details. Yeah, there's yeah. more details. They yeah. want to put you on yeah. that spot because you're not a doctor or yes, anything yes. to give us all the details. Yes. But at least we understand. Yes. So um, for ADHD, mm. uh, you, you've said it's the inactiveness or hyperactiveness yes. and um, a combination of the two for others. Yes. Um, bipolar, it's, there's one and two. So mm -hmm. one is mostly... F how. Uh, what is the difference between bipolar and ADHD then? Because uh, bipolar, we also have someone on a high. Oh, no, and then okay. The other, so know. bipolar is more mood. It's more mood related. Uh -huh. ADHD is more attention and executive functioning, like organization, mm -hmm. uh, timekeeping. Because uh, sometimes with ADHD, you have time time blindness where you're unable to just tell the time like you just like okay i need to be here at 7 30 but i'm here later oh, okay so you're just unable to balance so uh although there are people who there's this thing called masking so there are people who do the opposite who go way earlier because oh. they know this condition can mm -hmm. affect them in this way so maybe they'll be here at 5 a.m Oh. So, so there is also that element of masking. Mm -hmm. So some people may wonder, this person says they have this condition, but, but they don't have these symptoms, but they could be masking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, now, how is it uh, for someone like you who has mm -hmm. three of them? Mm -hmm. How 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 is it? How is your uh, day to day like? Um, it changes in seasons mm -hmm. because. Um, there are times um, it's, it gets to be a lot like in a high pressure season like now, mm -hmm. preparing for the concerts, okay. like preparing for what we'll get into later. And so that gets into, like it gets, the symptoms seem to come up a bit more. Mm -hmm. But I think with grounding techniques, which is, uh, which I learned through therapy and therapy itself, mm -hmm. I'm able to manage manage the symptoms so i i do take medication which is very helpful mm -hmm. and so i use medication and therapy to balance myself through different seasons there are times when it's harder than others mm -hmm. but uh overall it's like this year has been 
a good year it's had okay. less I have had in, I haven't had to be admitted into a hospital. Okay. Yeah. So it can get it can get to a place where you have to be admitted when yes, the symptoms are a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We're glad that you haven't gotten to the heart Thank of this you. It's, it has been a good year for you. Yes, I, it I has believe. been. Yes. All right. Uh, now, how moving to music for a bit, mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your journey in music. Okay, my journey in music started when I was about five. Mm -hmm. I started playing the recorder. Uh, it's the... Uh, it's like an instrument for blowing a wind instrument. Like the small Yeah, the small, small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I played it. And, um, and then when I was six, when mm -hmm. I went to primary school, I started playing piano. Okay. So I played classical piano uh, all through. And then when I started listening to different kinds of music, I would reach out to all my friends and be like, okay, let's start a band, let's start a band. <laughs> and anyone who was interested in music, Mm -hmm. And so when I was in primary, I think we recorded a song in a studio for one of our music classes. Mm -hmm. And that's when, I, so that's when I decided I wanted to do music like oh, wow. for the rest of my life. And so you knew it earlier, right earlier in yeah. life. That's, yes. This is, the, this is <laughs> this my is the, path. Yeah, this is my path. Okay. Yeah, yes. Uh, now yes. after that, into high school, you practiced music all through. I did. I did music. Um, I still, I used to, in high school, I sang, actually. Yeah. I sang in school. Yeah, I was actually asking you um, <laughs> before the show began, <laughs> can you sing? I'm and quite trusty you, now, uh, yes. <laughs> why did you stop? I think it was just uh, because of time, like focusing on uh, the music production bits mm -hmm. and versus getting time to practice uh, singing because I believe in excellence and so I want mm. I wouldn't want to compromise either okay. so I chose what I was more passionate about and that's the, the music production the music production yes behind it okay and how how was it like um, going to study for music production mm -hmm. how is it like for someone who's interested in music um, what picture would you paint well it's it's beautiful because it's it's mainly because of the people you meet. Because mm -hmm. you meet people from all over the world. Because it's an international school, so there's a lot of people from different schools. Mm -hmm. And so that was really good. And um, it's great because of you get a lot of information. Uh, and but one thing I did realize is that, the, that it is helpful to have a bit of knowledge on music production before you, mm. you, you go there, major it's, it's ma you major, okay. yeah, because it's, it's really deep end, like, <laughs> when you get there. <laughs> you throw it in yeah. the deep end and you yeah. have to make it work yes. one or the other. Yes. So you've got a lot of knowledge, a lot yes. of exposure yes. and all that. Yes. So um, what are you able to do with that uh, kind of knowledge that you have acquired? And you graduated in 20? 2018. 2018. Yes. So what have you been able to do with that? Well, since I got back, I've been unwell for most of the time. Okay. So I've been just like kind of picking myself up, putting myself together. Mm -hmm. And so now is when I'm like, okay, let's, let's go. Yeah. Right. yeah, let's go. So now is when I'm getting much, much deeper into production, mm -hmm. into film scoring and doing the music performances, organizing music productions. Okay, yeah. you, you've talked, uh, there's a lot of Greek that I've heard, saying like uh -huh. music scoring, what is it? Film scoring, oh, yeah. that's like writing music, like uh, writing music for films, like, you know the okay. way, like Hans Zimmer, like he writes the scores, like he writes like the notes for the instruments, mm -hmm. different instruments, orchestral instruments. Right. Sometimes it can be written for an orchestra to play, other times it can be played uh, like on just a keyboard on the laptop. Mm -hmm. So you just write the, the behind the scenes music okay. that plays in the movies. All right. So yeah. is, that, is that your major, um, film scoring? And um, do you do um, any other thing like music production for someone who wants to, um, pro uh, to, to produce the music, uh, the music produced rather? Yes. Do you do that? Or yes, I do. Have you majored on a particular thing? I, I do that. Um, I'm 
currently pursuing a master's. I'm working towards oh. pursuing a master's mm -hmm. in film scoring. Okay. So that I, I, I like music production and I enjoy it a lot, but I always love the music notes, like writing the music notes and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, so a combination of the two. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. You have something coming up? An yes, event? I do. Tell yes. us about it. So I have an event called Orchestral Worship. Mm -hmm. It's coming on, uh, it's on th th this Sunday, 3rd of November. And it is uh, where I'm going to bring together, I think it's uh, 40 piece, it's 52 people. 52 people. 52 people, vocalists, 11 vocalists, and, and then 36 orchestra members, and mm -hmm. three, I think three band members. Mm -hmm. And so we are coming together, playing songs that inspired me when I was hospitalized in hospital oh. last week, last year. Mm -hmm. And they're Christian songs, uh, so songs of encouragement, songs of, the, you know, the lyrics that capture when you have no words, oh. the, the, the songs. So okay. the, that's, that's what we have. And it's, it's quite good because it's been a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, working with a great team. And the people are really great to work with. Mm. And it's been like it's been reminding me of what I've gone through and how God has seen me through what I've gone through. Mm. And so it's been it ends up being a bit emotional sometimes oh. but but it's beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So. I think I love it already. Yes. <laughs> really nice. So this is from uh, it, it's been inspired, the the songs and everything that uh -huh. will be played by your journey and yes. how you've you uh, God healed you from that season uh, that you're in uh -huh. and now you're able to to give it back to others who might yes, be want going to, through, you know, who are going through a lot. Going and through that, yeah. Who want to hear it. Yes. That's a, that's a very noble thing to do. Thank you. <laughs> and it's beautiful. So have you, um, are you the one who's come up with, um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not good in music, and <laughs> but uh, what, what, what was your role in this event? What role okay, my played? role was mainly uh, project management and mm -hmm. producing the show. And then I got people, um, I wrote the, uh, the orchestration for one song. Okay. But because of doing the project management, I wasn't able to write for the other, other songs. songs. So I got people to write for the other songs. Mm -hmm. And then just leading the rehearsals, like, like overseeing the rehearsals. Although I had leaders for each section. Mm -hmm. So I, I chose to delegate, so at least also for the sake of my mental health. So the role has been more of being a project manager and the face of the of the event and mm. like it being like my story but because even within the concert we'll have a lot of mental health so that people, mental and health information uh -huh. so that people can know this is what you can do like let's say questions to ask the doctor because mm -hmm. that's mm. empowering patients True. because people don't know what to ask and how to challenge the doctors because it can be can be something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think yeah. that's very important. Yes. Uh, because I usually also I'm usually uh, pro that you know mm -hmm. uh, getting information yourself so that you can ask the doctor because yes. the doctor will just give you uh, the bare minimum and you just there and you accept everything because you know the doctor is an expert. Mm -hmm. But you could lead the doctor to something that maybe uh, they had forgotten or something. Yes. Of that sort, yes. Which is really important. So this is this is such a great event. Where will it be and other charges for it. Yes, so it will be at Braeburn Garden Estate. Sorry, where? It will be at Braeburn Garden Braeburn. Estate. Mm -hmm. um, on Sunday, there's a 2 p.m. show and a 6 p.m. show. Right now, there's a flash sale, so the tickets are half price mm -hmm. until 12 noon today. Okay. So tickets are 1,000, mm. but after 12 noon, it will be back to 2000. All right, so yeah. people should take advantage of this yes, time. <laughs> We've told you early enough, <laughs> you still have uh, more than uh, more than three hours, I think, yes. three hours there to get your tickets at 1000. Where can people get their tickets? Or oh, at hasosasa.com. At what? Hasosasa.com. Hasosasa.com. Yes, yes. That's H A S O. 
Oh, hustle, okay. Sasa, S A S A dot com and at Mashuja Africa Productions. At Mashuja. So that's the shop. That's the name of the shop. Mm -hmm. Mashuja, Mashuja Africa, Africa Productions. Productions. Okay, so yeah. hustle Sasa um, at Mashuja Africa, Africa. Produ Productions. Mashuja Africa Productions. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, the expectation is that they will get a lot of knowledge around mm -hmm. mental health. Yes. And they will also get to enjoy amazing music from experts, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining how many others are like you there as yes. experts. It's amazing. Um, I, I want you to tell us a bit um, of your story in terms of how, because you had mentioned you faced stigma mm -hmm. um, and even the family. How, mm -hmm. how did it come out? How did this stigma, how, how did you face this stigma and uh, how did you deal with it or how are you dealing with it if it's still there? Okay, so how I face the stigma is I think people are very quick to say, oh, it's witchcraft. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a curse, there's you need exorcism and all those things. And you know, you need to pray more. And uh, so that was part of the stigma. That was the greatest stigma that came from the church mm. and people who, relatives who are you know, close to the church. Yeah. And so that was difficult. And um, it's still this day, I think you still, I still face stigma. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I've managed to learn how to deal with it easier. Like, I don't take it to heart as much. Okay. Although it may hurt my feelings sometimes, I'm like, it's okay. Like, it's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, you know, like, it's, it's fine. Like, it's, it's not, I don't, I don't, like, let it fester in my mm -hmm. spirit. I don't let it bring me, that crush me too much. Okay. But stigma is still there, very much there, because for some reason, people don't, Many people don't understand that this is come close to home. Yeah, you yeah. just hear it from from somewhere. You know, there's mental health issues, there's depression. Yes, there's, there's this, there's that. It's yes, a story until it gets close home. Yes, and you still can't comprehend it. You know, how yes. is this happening? Yes, and, and everything. Then how are you able to deal with it? Because. Uh, from uh, what you're doing and what you've said, mm -hmm. you believe in God. I yes, believe. yes. So how was, the, how did you, how were you able to believe in God? Yet uh, you got the stigma from people in the church. I think uh, it became, you know, like it became to it got to a point where I realized that just because it was people in the church. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't, they were not just necessarily God, so oh. my relationship with God should be different from just, like my mom tells me, it's best to compartmentalize. Mm -hmm. So some, <laughs> some, so for them, they were, you know, they are Christians are still people and still have flaws. You're still human yeah, beings. Yeah, still human beings, so yeah. I shouldn't, like, affect, use that to affect my relationship with God. And also, I met a pastor who was, really good and she she understood me and she we talked about my mental health and she actually helped me comprehend because the main challenge i had is mm -hmm. how can i be a christian and how a mental health condition mm. because it was it was it was because of stigma stigma makes you think that if you're a christian you're like you shouldn't you shouldn't be going through, you shouldn't be going through the you mental should. health because it's those are like evil things, you know. Okay. So, but this pastor, particular pastor, helped me understand, and so that uh, uh, connection also brought me a lot of healing. Okay. Yeah. Wow, wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. You're able to compart compart wow. The, the <laughs> compartmentalize. Compartmentalize yes. the two, the, the yes. different things, and I think yes. that actually helps. And how was it for you? Um, because you said you were diagnosed with the two ADHD and uh, is it ADHD? You no, know, bipolar, bipolar and schizophrenia. schizophrenia yeah. Yeah. When you were still in primary school. When I was fifteen. You no, know, I was oh, in high was, school. That was in high school. Yes. Uh, 
how how did you how was your primary school like then if you had this and you did not know about it okay my primary school i was i was depressed a lot i had ulcers mm -hmm. uh when i was like nine and then um so i moved schools and then i got into sports and that actually helped like you know the way really? sports helps mm -hmm. the mood and everything so that helped me but my teachers were still concerned because i was not eating and mm -hmm. so uh, it was still an issue uh, until, so I still had issues, like physical issues, like my stomach and everything, mm -hmm. because of like anxiety and depression. So I had, my body was the one getting sick instead of, mm -hmm. like my, it was reflecting my mental health. Uh -huh. um, so primary was a bit difficult, but when I moved schools, it was a bit better because I got into sports, so uh -huh. I had an outlet. Mm -hmm. it yes, yes, it helped. Yeah. And now, um, after being diagnosed when you are in high school, mm -hmm. did that did that affect your teenagehood um, to some point? It did because I was out of school for about a year. Or was it was a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So, because I was in and out of hospital, and I was heavily medicated, so it was it was a lot, and. I gained a lot of weight because of the medicine, the medications mm. uh, really give you a heavy, like a big appetite and mm. then the medication itself actually makes you gain weight. Mm -hmm. So that was difficult for high school. Uh, but um, once I went into school, I went into a school, when I moved schools again, mm -hmm. it was a school where people understood most of the people were really nice. Okay. There were people here, yeah, one, one or two who didn't really you understand about them, mental yeah. health, so, so they make fun of me, but majority were like supportive. really supportive and everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about when you went, um, I think, to the U.S. Yes. to study? Uh, this is a new environment. Uh, yes. I, I can imagine the culture shock and everything's yes. different. Now, how was that for you? That there? was, okay. I was really close with the African community mm -hmm. there, so the different Africans, Kenyans, Ghanaians, Nigerians, South Africans, it was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so I connected with them and made other friends also from America. And so it was, it was helpful. But in the beginning, the first two years were fine, but then in 2015, I think that's when I got an episode and that's when things went downhill. Okay. And so I got really sick and was in and out of hospital mm -hmm. until I graduated. Okay. Yes. So it was a bit challenging the, the last It was a bit years. challenging because especially uh, when you are on a lot of medication and having a lot of treatments and you're trying to, you're in a high pressure uh, major and you need to remember stuff mm. like it's very difficult because you're heavily medicated but uh, you have to remember memorize stuff mm -hmm. so that was really tough yeah okay and uh, how has family supported you uh, in your journey family has supported me in the sense that well I'll talk about my nuclear family okay family have supported me in the sense that they have been there, like they have, and they have even when they have not understood like what's going on, because we are all learning. Mm -hmm. Like this is just something that's like never you know we've not seen it before. Mm -hmm. They have been there, so like we fight and disagree, but they are still there. Like I wake up and they're, they're still there. there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So I am I'm grateful for that, and uh, so that's that's really something that I'm grateful for. Some extended family have also been there. Mm -hmm. Like I have one of my aunts who has been like nuclear family. Okay. Like she's just, she came to see me when I was in, I was in Boston in America. Mm -hmm. She came and spent time with me when I was unwell. And so, uh, yeah, so there are also some extended families, mm -hmm. some extended family members who have really been there. Some though. Where yeah. not? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay because we understand, you know, yes. it's just their ignorance. Yes, that's true. Okay, and friends, what, 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 how, what role have they played in your life? Friends have, they are friends who have been really supportive, um, 
who have been there uh, since the beginning and even from college, uh, their friends who have been there, so who, who have supported me, encouraged me when I'm unwell, mm. and sent me messages, prayed for me, and it's been very helpful. And of course, it's been in different seasons, yeah. like different friends in different seasons, mm -hmm. like life. Like life happens for all of us. Like yeah. There are different people we connect with in different seasons. Mm -hmm. But it's just been great to have people in each season, different people in each season of my life who have encouraged me and been there for me. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. We thank God yeah. for all the amazing friends who thank you. have come yeah. through. What about your relationships? I can imagine um, you, you're, that is the romantic type of relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, how have you been able to uh, walk in that uh, area? I think in the past it's been um, it's been very like because I've not really known how to manage my mood, especially with the bipolar. Mm. It's like it's spiked. Like the relationships have been affected by, by outbursts on my on my end. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's been a learning process, but now I'm working on that, and I've been working on that with my therapist. Okay. And so with time now, I don't really have outbursts, so I know I I can communicate things in an easier, simpler, mm -hmm. and kinder way. And so, yes. Hopefully that can translate better in the future. The relationships, so, it's yeah. real. I love that there's, you know, it gets better with time. Yes, Once it you does. understand it with yes. therapy and uh, with the faith that you have, you know, mm -hmm. it gets better with time. What yes. would you want people to know about uh, mental health out here? Because a lot of people are ignorant about mental mm -hmm. health. What, do you, what would you want them to know? Hmm. Okay, I'd like them to know that mental health is... It's just like a broken arm. Like mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not different. A broken arm needs treatment. Like if you stay at home, you'll, you'll, you'll struggle, you'll be in pain and everything. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we all started to see it like as simple as a broken arm, mm -hmm. we would get the help we needed and we would, uh, we would allow those around us to get the help they needed mm -hmm. instead of shielding them because we are embarrassed of what society would think if our child, our sister, our brother has sought treatment for mental health. So it's just like a broken arm, but mm. in the brain, okay. it's just, yeah. So we need to change our perspective, how we view mental mm. health. It's just like any other disease that you'd get and yeah. get treatment for, you mm -hmm. know. Once we accept this as a society, then it'll become easier for even mm -hmm. those that are going through, um, who have problems uh, mm -hmm. around mental health. Mm -hmm. What about uh, someone who's out there and uh, they've been just been diagnosed with uh, one of the mental health, uh, either problems, either bipolar, any, any of them, and they, they're, they're really um, discouraged. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? I'll tell them uh, to seek community, mm -hmm. like friends or people around them who can encourage them. And then two, just to know that like, it's not the end. It's knowing why, knowing that finding out that you have this particular condition just shows you, explains to you the why behind everything you've been experiencing. So it gives you a way to open doors for the future. You know, this is, this is why I was doing this. So in the future, I can apply this in this way. Mm -hmm. And so also therapy is good. Therapy is very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think that, 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 that's what I'd say. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow, wonderful. So f they should find a community mm -hmm. and um, um, get therapy for mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. so there's also acceptance mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. and i love that uh what you've said that it 
everything that you've been going through makes yeah. sense at mm -hmm. some point because I had a friend who had ADHD and he felt he was weird you know mm -hmm. throughout his life and now when he f got that he, uh, after being diagnosed was like okay now this makes sense yes. <laughs> now I understand why and yes. now I can you know now I know better you know yes. I know how to you know when this happens I know how to approach it better and, yes. and all that wonderful and now we celebrated that you are doing something towards it you are being a voice for the others that are going through mental health and those that even don't know about it mm -hmm. you're creating that awareness for it mm -hmm. and that's why you have this event mm -hmm. so I just want you to remind us about the event details before mm -hmm. we come to close on this and why it's important for them to to attend it okay you can either speak to me or speak directly to the camera okay so this event is uh, called orchestral worship which will be holding on 3rd November, there's a, a two, 2024, there's a 2 p.m. show and there's a 6 p.m. show. Um, it's at Rayburn Garden Estate and I believe it will be great to have you there because it's, it's about mental health awareness and there'll be a lot of content to encourage you and to lift up your spirits through music and storytelling. And yes, I think that's that's, that's it. it. Yeah. We have all the details. Thank yes. you very much, Kathy. Thank you. We appreciate you coming here today and uh, sharing your story and uh, inviting us to your event. So Thank we'll you. turn up. We'll be sure to turn up. Make sure you do. That has been Kathy Kiragu. She is a highly skilled and passionate film composer and sound engineer with a background uh, of music from Berkeley College of Music. And she's also very passionate about mental health. I hope you've taken something from this to either feel encouraged, empowered, and even aware of mental health. Uh, out here as a password so that you can be kinder and be more supportive so we're going to take a short break now enjoy some music and then we'll be back with the next interview stay with us